Hi, and welcome to the University of New South Wales and the School of Mathematics and Statistics in particular. My name is Thomas Britz and I'd like to show you the solutions to problems 22 and 23 in the course Math 3411. So problem 22 is all about the sphere packing bound and we've seen this bound be explained as a, as a theorem in the lectures and the course notes, but that was only for the binary case, the case in which the radix uh, r was equal to 2. Now we're going to look at the general case. Now suppose that we have a code C that can correct up to t errors. So C is t error correcting. The way that we can visualize this correction, or the way that the code corrects the words, is by looking at the total space of the words that we have call them V, and then we might have some code words here, some here, some here, who knows where. But if C is T error correcting, then we can draw little spheres around these code words, each of radius T, and if we receive any word, for instance word here, let's call it y, that isn't a code word but is within distance t to a code word, then we simply correct this word by replacing it with the code word that it's you know, closest to. So in other words, if we have a word that falls within one of these spheres, then we just identify that word with the code word in the middle of the sphere, and that's how we do our correcting. This picture gives us a very simple but really important observation, namely that all the words within the spheres, if we count them, then that number is less than or equal to the total number of words. The reason for that is that the spheres can't overlap. If they overlapped, then the error correcting property would disappear. Uh, if they overlapped, then we could find words within an intersection of these spheres that we couldn't correct. We couldn't snap it to uh, one or the other code word because we wouldn't know which one to snap it to so broadly speaking. Now all we need to do to find the sphere picking bound is to express that observation mathematically. The first thing that we can say is that we're talking about a special space of words, in particular the words zr to the power of n, so they're all the strings of length n where the symbols are taken from zr, so the numbers from 0 to n, r minus 1, modular r. Now, we didn't have to choose that particular set. We could, uh, we could have chosen any alphabet of size R. The algebraic properties of ZR are completely irrelevant at, in this context. So the number of words in total is just the cardinality of V, which is R to the power of N, because for each of the N coordinates of a word, we have R choices, and there we go. So that's one part of the puzzle. The second part of the the second big part of the puzzle is to figure out how many words are contained in one of these spheres. Our first observation here is that the spheres have equal size. Around every single code word there are a constant uh, number of uh, words at the distance of most t. So in other words, the number of words in each of these, in, in any of these spheres, is just the number of spheres times the volume of one of these spheres. And the uh, Furthermore, the, the number of spheres is just the number of code words. So, all we have to do is multiply the number of code words by the volume around any particular code word, and that will give us the sphere packing bound uh, here. We're almost done. We just have to find out what this volume actually is equal to. So to find that out, we can say, well, this volume is equal to the sum of all the numbers of words at distance zero, there's only one, the code word itself, all, uh, all the code words of distance one, two, and three, all the way up to distance t. So we have the sum here from i to t, 
where we then have to count how many code words are there of distance i from x. So if we look at the code word uh, y, call it y1 up to yn, and we have x here. Then we could say, for instance, that these two code or these two words have distance uh, i, so they're i distinct coefficients or i differences. And how many of these words are there then? Well, first we could consider the uh, coefficients in which they're different, these two. And how many ways are there of choosing that? Well, there are n coordinates. And we're choosing i of them. Now, for each of those coordinates where there are differences, we can choose the y value to be different from the x value in r minus 1 ways. Uh, we have an alphabet of size r. One of, the value, one of those symbols is used there, so we can uh, choose the remaining r minus 1 and get a difference. So we have r minus 1 ways of cho choosing the difference, and that's true for each of the coordinates in which there's a difference. And there we have that expression there. That's the volume of each of those spheres around any of the code words of radius up to, or radius t. So, now we have the sphere packing bound. If we just replace this expression by this sum there, like so, we've calculated each of the terms in the original inequality, and that leads us exactly to the sphere packing bound for radix r, and there we're done. Now a natural question would be, when is the sphere packing bound actually achieved? Which codes would uh, satisfy that uh, we have an equal sign uh, there in this inequality? Those co codes are called perfect codes, and we saw in the lectures that the, in the binary case, that there weren't very many of those types of codes. In the general case, things are a bit different, but we have to show that the radix r Hamming codes actually are perfect. So, first of all, what's a radix r Hamming code? And that leads us to problem 23. In that problem, we have to construct a radix r Hamming code for the value r being equal to 5. And do, uh, we have to construct the parity check matrix for it just with two rows, or in other words, two, uh, two check bits. So M is 2. And just like in the binary case, we simply just take all the vectors, except the zero vector, and write them down. So we have 1, 0, 2, 0. And here we're following again the binary uh, case example, where we're just taking all the numbers from 1 upwards, and we're converting them into base well, in this case, base 5. So 1 1s, 0 5s, 2 1s, 0 5s, and so forth. So 3 0, 4 0. When we get to 5, it's 0 1s and 1 5, and so on. Like so, I've written up a whole lot of column vectors, but I'm actually not interested in more than a quarter of them, because now I'm going to look at all the scalar multiples, uh, the equivalence classes of those, and just choose one representative, generally the one with a 1 in, in the top position. So for instance, if we look at the first four columns, you can see that they are scalar multiples of each other. They just, uh, the first column times 1, 2, 3, and 4. Out of those, I'm going to delete the 3 here and just keep the one with the 1 on top. Same thing for this vector, we've got 0, 1, Get rid of 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4. Then we can move on to 1, 1. Its multiples are 1, 1, and 2, 2, and 3, 3, and 4, 4. Then we can move on to 2, 1. The multiples of 2, 1 are 4, uh, 2, 6, 3. Now 6 mod 5 is just 1. And then we have... 3, 4 as the last multiple. Out of these four multiples of each other, we're going to choose the one with the 
one on top, just to keep things in that sort of orderliness. So we get rid of 2, 1, 4, 2, and 3, 4. So we find them here, 2, 1, and 4, 2, and 3, 4, like so. And we continue. For 3, 1, we had 1, uh, 2, 4, 3, and 2, 4. They are the multiples of 3 over 1, or multiples of 2 over 1 if you wish as well. And if we get rid of these, then we have 4, 3, and 2, 4. Now we're almost finished. We've just got 4 over 1 and its multiples. So that's 8 over 2. 8 is the same as 3 mod 5. And 1 over 4. These are the four multiples here of each other there. So let's get rid of the first three and leave this one. So these. So where's 4, 1, 3, 2, and 2, 3? And we're done. So let's rewrite the matrix. Like that. Now we want to show that Radix R Hamming codes are perfect. So they attain, they attain this bound. There's an equal sign here. In order to show that, we need to find out a couple of things. We need to know how big our Radix R Hamming code is. We need to find out what that sum is equal to. And we need to find out in particular what the value of n is equal to. So let's have a look at this little code here. Here we have m rows and m check bits. We also have some information bits. We have n minus m of those. And that gives us the dimension of the code. So we have one of the values. So we have that c, the number of elements in that, the number of code words is r to the power of m, n minus m. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the pieces of the puzzle. So for the next piece of the puzzle, let's figure out what the value of n, uh, n is equal to. That's the number of columns here. Well, by our construction, we found all of the, we took all of the column vectors that were possible and then removed the zero vector and then we took just one representative out of each scalar multiple, uh, multiple set. So in other words, there were R possibilities for this coordinate, R for this coordinate. In general, if we had column vectors of length m, we would have R to the power of m, different sorts of column vectors. But we first of all assured that we didn't have the zero vector, so we got rid of the zero vector. So we have to subtract one from that total number. And then we took all multiples of it of uh, a given vector, and we just chose one representative. So in other words, we divided the total number by r minus 1. So n is given exactly like that. Now uh, another piece of the puzzle is to figure out what t is equal to. And that's not too hard, because we know that the minimum distance of this code, or a in fact, of any Radix R Hamming code, is exactly equal to 3. Why is that? Well, there's no zero vector, column vector, so therefore the minimum, dis minimum distance isn't equal to 1. It can't be equal to 2 either, because there aren't any two column vectors that are linearly dependent. They'd be scalar multiples of each other, and by construction we've uh, taken care of that, that that doesn't happen. So our minimum distance is at least equal to 3, and then you can quickly convince yourself that it must be equal to 3. We can always find three column vectors, whether it's this small example or some bigger example where m is bigger than just 2. We can always find three column vectors that will be linearly dependent. So we have that d is equal to 3, in which case we've got that t is equal to 1. 
So 2 times t plus 1 is equal to d. I think we have all the, all the ingredients now to prove that this left-hand side is in fact equal to the right-hand side. Let's, let's have a look. So we have the size of c times this sum here. And the size of c was equal to r to the power uh, r to the power of m n minus m. The sum here is actually just the sum over two terms, where i is equal to zero and where i is equal to one. So we've got that the first term that's just equal to one because n choose 0 is 1, something to the power of 0 is also 1, and there we go. For the second term, we have that it's equal, uh, i is equal to 1, so n choose 1 is n, and then we've got r minus 1 to the power of 1, so we have r minus 1. Now n, that was equal to this fraction here, so let's replace n by this here. We have r to the power of m minus 1 over r minus 1. And then you can see that a lot of things cancel out. This r minus 1 cancels out with this r minus 1. This 1 cancels out with this 1. And this minus m cancels out with that m. And in fact, all that remains is the right-hand side, r to the power of... That's supposed to be an r here r to the power of n. And we're done. The left-hand side was in fact equal to the right-hand side, so these codes are perfect. OK, we're almost done. We've solved problem 22, and half of 23, we just have to conclude uh, problem 23. To do so, we have to take the code that we had found previously, the Radix 5 code, and look at this word and uh, correct it, and then decode it with respect to that code. This is not related to the previous, uh, previous sphere packing bound, at least not very much. So what we found out a little bit earlier in the video was that these Radix R codes can correct up to one error. So let's suppose that this uh, received word has at most one error. In other words, it's equal to a code word x plus some uh, error which we can give like or which we can write like this uh, a times ei transpose so in other words the ith position is possibly uh, not the correct one if a is zero then there is no error but if a is not zero then the ith position has an error in it so let's figure out whether y in fact is a code word or not and as usual we just take the syndrome of y S of Y is equal to H of Y transpose. And to calculate that, well, this is just matrix multiplication, of course, but in particular, it's also 4 times the first column plus 1 times the second plus 1 times the second and last plus 3 times the very final one. So 3 over 12, which is the same as 2 minus 5. So that gives us 4 plus 1 plus 3 is 8, which is 3. And here we have 6, which is 1, 3 over 1. So first of all, we note that the syndrome is not the zero vector, so there is at least one error. And we're assuming that there's at most one error, so there's just one error. Uh, so we have to find out what position the error is in, that's the value of i there, and we have to figure out what a is equal to uh, in order that we can subtract a from, from the value of that position in, in y. So can we recognize this vector as a column vector here? Well, not quite. In the binary case that would be perfectly sufficient to do. Here we can't do it always because of this value of a. But can we find one of these columns to be scaled in such a way to give us this vector here, 
And yes, we can. If we take uh, this column here in the fourth position, then we have that three times that column is in fact equal to three over one. Three times two is six, which is one mod five. So apparently we have that A is equal to three and I is equal to the fourth position there. So if we look at our received word, this is where the error is and in order to correct it we need to subtract A from zero which is minus 3 or mod 5, that's 2. And then we get the correct code word or the corrected code word 410013. And let's just write this corrected one in green so that we can see it's corrected. Now to decode, all we need to do is find the information bits, which were the four last ones here. So we have 0. 2, 1 and 3 and that's the decoded word arising from this corrected word here. And we're all done. So, thank you very much.